so glad that you joined us today. Well, right after the, the drama, and just as I gave you the greeting time, George walked up and said, why don't you just let him go home? <laughs> Wasn't that enough? <laughs> you didn't know you were playing into my hand. Well, why, why don't we just go? So we ain't preached yet. That's the question for this morning. Why do we have to preach? Wednesday night, we had a wonderful song time. And we had one of those ye pickle nights. And we sang some wonderful songs. And we picked some great songs. And Ed said to me, to close the service, he said, we could have done that all night long. We could have. Sometimes we probably should have. And why do we have to have preaching? He said, well, it's tradition. The Baptists started it. <laughs> now they started Sunday school. Jesus started preaching. Why is it important? Is it important? Is it important for you to even think about it? I mean, you know, you, you know it's going to be. Why? Well, for one reason, it's because I'm not the only one in this room called to preach. Who's he talking about? You. That's who I'm talking about. We'll deal with that a little bit. I, I wrote down in my notes a couple of questions. Is style important? In preaching, because you know there there are so many different styles. Some will will get behind the podium and they will have their robe and they will be very very proper. And what they share may be no different whatsoever than the one who will rant and rave and jump off the platform and scream and holler and, and wave his arms and in and, and, and my. Uh, History, I remember them talking about running the backs of the pews. I don't know how you do that. Did you ever see anybody run the back of the pews? Me either. Especially back then, they didn't bolt them down. I don't know how in the world you pull that off. But is there importance in the style? And my only answer to that is, it's only important if one style or another communicates the message better in the context in which you're sharing it. Who are you talking to? What is not just their comfort, but what will teach them the word better and let them understand it better? I don't think one is more holy than the other, although I'll, I'll be honest with you, Early in my ministry, there were some that tagged me just not quite as much of a preacher as some of the others because I didn't know enough. And I didn't carry a, a hanky to wipe my forehead because I slept the whole way through. One of my favorite preachers down in South Carolina, Jesse Winley, he didn't carry a hanky. He carried a towel. And he needed it. He filled it full. And the last time I saw him preach, he had a Hand soon on him, and he was, he was sharp. He was the pastor of the soul saving station of every nation, the Christ Crusaders of America in Harlem. Did you follow all that? I sit on the platform, and he would always start it with his towel. And I saw this little dark spot show up in between his shoulders on his suit. Well, you know what's happening in that tan suit starting to show <laughs> the perspiration. And I watched that spot grow. <laughs> Before he finished, the whole back end suit was a different color than the study space. The only reason that's important at all is the communication of the gospel. And if it's fitting for the moment, it's important. Now, here's a very dangerous question that I wrote on the bottom of my paper. How long is the perfect sermon? I'm not going to take a vote. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends in this town.
town who have said to me, if I don't preach an hour, I've not preached. They're, they're telling me. And if those of you who are part of this church know, I don't know that I've ever preached an hour. I may try it today just to see. <laughs> no, I don't plan on it. I remember in Sioux City, Iowa, it was a night service. And we closed our evening services in, in the altar in times of prayer. And I had noticed that a visitor had come in. And we're I'm glad to have the boss here today. But he sat right where you're sitting. That's so glad to have you guys here today. He sat right there. So that must be the visitor spot, okay? And I, I, I did the Bible study for that night. And I finished and called the folks to the altar. And I came and dealt with the folks at the altar. And, and I'm, I'm trying to pray. And I had a cat on my shoulder. And I looked up and it's the visitor. And I said, uh, yes, sir. Do you need some prayer or do you need something? He says, no, I just have a question. I says, well, why? Well, what's your question? He said, why'd you quit? <laughs> I said, what? He said, why'd you quit? And the only, the only answer I could even think of, and I, I, I said to him, because I was done. That's <laughs> <laughs> the only answer I know. I was done. You know how long the perfect sermon is? When a preacher quits when he's done. <laughs> right? I've heard a few, they were done a long time before they were <laughs> And I've heard of you that really weren't done yet and need to finish. Now, I'm going to get to the meat of this eventually. The, the other question I put on here, what's the difference between a sermon or preaching, a lesson or teaching, and a message or sharing? It's one of those things that we will use the terms interchangeably. But they really are three different things of which they can become parts of each other. But primarily, a sermon is shared to bring about a decision. A, a proper sermon, at the end of that sermon, you will have a choice. You will either choose to be more of a disciple, you will choose to read your Bible more, you will choose to tithe more, you will choose to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you will choose to become a member of the church. Really, sermons are there to bring about and leave each of us with a decision. Now, a lesson or teaching is there to prepare us to be the disciples that we're called to be. Now, there may be a sermon in the midst of a lesson, and you may have to make a decision in the midst of that, but primarily, and, and, and again, in, in my heritage, basically the difference between preaching and teaching was the volume. If you were loud, you were a preacher. If you were soft, you were a teacher. I'm going to tell you, that's erroneous. That's wrong. Sermons do not require a certain volume, nor does teaching require a certain peacefulness or quietness. Teaching is to teach you to know how to serve God better. To teach you about the things of God. To inform you about the things of God. Jesus went preaching and teaching. And then a message. This is my favorite one. And I pray that every time I step to this podium, there's a message that comes from it. A message is always, from my looking through the context of Scripture, about relationship. It will be a message is something from one person to another. You will have, it will say, a, a, a message from God a message from Paul, and it will name the teachers. Uh, it, it will have some sort of identification of that message that it has someone that it's coming from and someone that it's going to. 
If I tell you this morning I love you, that is a message from my heart to your heart. Now, again, sermons will be full of messages because God's heart is to bring to you his word and his truth. Messages are a little different than morals. A moral to a story? You know, if you go to the storytelling thing at, down in Jonesboro, they will think a moral of the story is. Message is a little more than that. It's just not the underlying meaning. It's the heart of the one that is sharing that to you. And really what I want you to ask at the end of every service that we have together, whether it is from the drama team, because there was a message in that to you from God, or whether it be from what I share from this pulpit, I want you to ask before you leave this place, God, what was your message to my heart from this service? And that message may have come through a hymn, it may have come through a worship song. It may have come through any means of, of instruments. But I want you to know every day, not just Sundays, every day God has a message for you. It's one of the reasons you should read your word. Because in that reading of the word, when you get through, even if you're in the middle of Leviticus, and you've named 4,700 generations in that reading of Leviticus. Before you quit, say, Lord, is there a message for me in this? What are you saying to me? Okay, now, to finish it, we're going to go to a lot of scriptures. And I've got plenty of time to do it, so just hang in. Why do we have preaching? Number one. Because Jesus told us to. Now, that's, that's probably one we could just leave on that one. If there's no other reason in the world, that's enough. Mark chapter 3, verse 14, he appointed 12 that they might be with him for the learning and the training, that he might send them out to preach. Later, chapter 16, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now again, that is not the call to a vocation. It's a call to a passion. Preaching the gospel. Jesus even said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and we will look even later at the illustration of Jesus in his preaching. But verse 43 says, He said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick, Luke chapter 9. Later in chapter 9, Jesus said to them, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And then in Acts chapter 10, verse 42, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Jesus called us all to preach. You say, does that mean uh, introduction, three points, and a conclusion? No, it means to share enough of the gospel to leave that one that you're talking to with a decision to make. It may be one word. It may be a lemon meringue pie. It may be an illustration in a story. It may be simply your life preaching the gospel by the way you live to where that the people that rub shoulders with you will have to make a decision because of what you place in their life and the illustration that you live before them. We all, and let me tell you, there's a lot of people who need to make a lot of decisions. And it's not just the decision for salvation, although that is the ultimate decision. That's the most important decision that anyone will ever make in their life. And until they've made that decision, everything else takes. 